In this gospel snippet, I want to speak for a few minutes on what I call a shadow. I'm speaking of the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, and I'm speaking of something which occurred there, a historical event. But in that historical event, God foreshadowed the gospel. The event I'm thinking of in this snippet is the time when Abraham uh, was spared from sacrificing his son. And we read in Genesis 22 and verse 13 that Abraham, seeing a ram caught in a thicket, offered the ram as a sacrifice in the stead of his son. And this was a clear picture. I say clear. It was clear to Abraham at the time that the ram was sacrificed instead of his son. But he saw in that shadowy, uh, indistinct form, but he saw clear enough that there would come another lamb, another ram, that would be sacrificed in the place of sinners. We know that Christ uh, said that Abraham had seen his Christ day and rejoiced. And he was looking forward by faith to Christ. And I'm sure that in Genesis 22, verse 13, that experience, he saw that day some of the leading principles of the gospel in shadowy form. What did he see there? The ram sacrificed in the stead of his son. I would say this very clearly, that he saw there the substitutionary atonement of Christ, vicarious atonement, in the place of, in the place of his son, he sacrificed a ram. Of course, of course, the law would say more about it with the sacrifices. Of course, uh, Isaiah 53 would prophesy more clearly about it. Of course, John the Baptist, behold the Lamb of God, would speak even more clearly about it. John chapter 10, Christ speaking of laying down his life for the sheep. And Peter, in his letter, setting forth tremendously as a lamb, foreordained, his blood shed for sinners. Of course, it would have to await such revelation to bring the full picture. But nevertheless, Abraham did see on that mountain, he did see the principles of substitutionary atonement vicarious atonement. He couldn't have sung the hymn. It wasn't written. In my place condemned he stood, sealed my pardon with his blood, speaking of Christ. But that's what was going on there. The point is this, my friend. We don't have to look at shadows now. We have the clear revelation in the Gospels and in the rest of the New Testament, in Christ himself. Christ is the Lamb of God, He did die in the place, in the room, in the stead of sinners. Substitutionary atonement, vicarious atonement. And the sinner who trusts Christ can say, In my place condemned he stood, sealed my pardon with his blood. And I bring this gospel snippet to you, my friend, and urge you to come to Christ and trust him as your substitute. Cast yourself upon him and rely upon him, and know that his blood has washed you, his righteousness has been imputed to you, and your sins have been laid on him. Your sins being laid on him, his righteousness being laid on you, and his blood washing you. That is substitutionary atonement. Abraham saw it in shadow. You can see it clearly in the gospel, and I put it to you now. It is the glorious fact of the gospel. Islam doesn't have it. Buddhism doesn't have it. Hinduism doesn't have it. Nothing else has it. Only Christ brings substitutionary atonement. Will you trust him as your substitute even now? I urge you to rest upon his finished work and say, he stood in my place. He died for me. He rose for me. That is substitutionary atonement. I urge you to trust the Savior now.